Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Well, with just a week to go until the start of the new school term, a row has broken out about one of the government's flagship free schools in Bradford. The one in a million school was due to open in six days, but the government has now withdrawn funding as the school hasn't recruited enough pupils. It leaves parents with a huge headache as they have just a few days now to find a replacement school for their children. In a moment we'll hear from the local MP David Ward but first Spencer Stokes has this report. Building work was underway, staff had been recruited, pupils enrolled and that was seven weeks ago. The one in a million school thought it had a cast iron guarantee from the government that it would be opening on September the 3rd. The principal was looking forward to taking up a new challenge. A lot of people understand that education is changing and that there is room to do something different. The one in a million school was to be based at Bradford City Football Club, funded directly by the government but run by a charity. The plan was to provide an exciting learning environment for 50 children this year, eventually rising to 350. But at the last minute, the Department for Education refused to release the money that would allow the school to open. 32 11-year-olds who are due to start here at one in a million next week will now have to find a new school. Six staff no longer have jobs and over £200,000 of public money has been spent on converting a building which may never be used as a school. James East is one pupil affected and his mum is now wondering where he'll go to learn on Monday morning. My first initial reaction was it's not going to be open on the 3rd of September, it's going to take a week or two. You know, maybe the building's delayed or the playground isn't done or we haven't got the desks in. That's what I thought. So when he actually said, you know, no, they're not going to fund us, I was in tears. The Department for Education say they couldn't sign the school off because it hadn't recruited 50 pupils and released a statement saying before any new schools open, we have to be sure that all the conditions have been met. We still hope that one in a million will open in 2013. But the school is unconvinced and suggested today that the government is using low pupil numbers as an excuse. It doesn't make sense after the conversations we've had with them that that is the reason they've stated as the one for not signing off funding agreement. So we don't think it's a valid reason. We believe we've met all their conditions. So we, we only start to conjecture that maybe there are other, other reasons, whether they're financial or political. The amount of time and money being spent on a few free schools up and down the country seems to me a, a, a bit of a distraction when, when the whole system needs a coordinated approach to, meet, approach to meet the rising numbers. Bradford has had more applications for free schools than anywhere else outside of London. But the disappointment experienced over one in a million may leave some parents feeling sceptical about this flagship education policy. Spencer Stokes, BBC Look North, Bradford. Spencer, thank you. Well, we did ask to speak to the government about this, but we were told that no one from the Department for Education was available. But earlier I spoke to the Liberal Democrat MP, David Ward, who is the MP for Bradford East, and I put it to him that parents and pupils in Bradford had been let down by the government. Now, it's callous, uh, it's cruel, and it's quite stupid in my view, uh, and uh, incredibly unfair uh, on the parents, the children involved, and of course on one in a million who have put so much time into this. I know the one in a million crowd, we have our differences about free schools, but this is not really about that. I've got a great deal of respect for them there, and I know they've put heart and soul into this, done everything the government's required of them, and they've been very, very badly let down. Obviously there will be parents who are extremely angry tonight. What's your message to those parents and how can you reassure them? Well, how can you reassure them at such late notice? But the other uh, ingredient in this, of course, is the local education authority. It has a statutory responsibility to provide places for children and it will have to pick up the pieces. We have these people who are hundreds of miles away, totally indifferent to the concerns of ordinary people, just next year, if, we, if you manage to get it sorted out, have a go next year. They have no understanding of the difficulties they've caused and frankly it seems uh, no interest in it. Where does this leave the whole free schools policy, especially in places and cities like Bradford? Well, it will continue. There's an ideological obsession with free schools. It's been driven by uh, Michael Gove. Uh, he has no real understanding of the difficulties that may cause in certain communities and no real interest in those concerns. He will just 
carry on with this, um, with this ideological obsession with free schools, but even for the free schools, the ones that he's so committed to, how can he do this to these children and to these parents and indeed to one in a million? Callous, cruel and stupid. But your party is in coalition government with Michael Gove's party. Surely the Liberal Democrats are partly to blame, aren't they? Yeah, well, I speak for me, I speak for the people I represent, uh, and I've certainly I voted against the Academy's bill, and I've always been opposed to free schools. But this is not about free schools. This is about a commitment that was made to these children and parents and to one in a million, which at the very last moment has been withdrawn from them. And the impact on that the government doesn't care. The impact on the parents, the impact on the children, just let somebody else pick up the pieces. Callous, cruel and very stupid. Very briefly, you have a conduit to Michael Gove. What can you feed back to him? Well, I've tried to get him here to Bradford. He came last year, I think it was the year before, saying he'd been to Bradford, but he really he went to Bingley and Ilkley, and that is not Bradford. I've said to him, will you come to the inner city of Bradford and see the impact of some of the things that you're doing? And he promised to do that in the spring of this year, and he's failed to keep that promise. He needs to get here. He needs to sit in front of people in Bradford so that he can understand what his policies mean for people in a place like Bradford. Okay, David Ward, many thanks for joining us this evening.